no square root of n, uh, no, of order one of the radius square root of n, of order one. Around this uh, real axis, where you have square root of n eigenvalues, you will see some depletion of complex eigenvalues. This follows basically from this modulus of y factor, which shows that when it uh, density of complex eigenvalues goes to zero when you approach uh, this axis, uh, real axis. Uh, but otherwise, if we just look at, at typical scales comparable with uh, the, the uh, typical size of the circle, you see ju just it's uniform. Okay, so this is more or less uh, the picture that uh, we have for the densities. So uh, uh, coming back to, to, uh, to the question I started with, so we see that indeed uh, square root of n uh, is correct scaling for to expect the largest real part uh, of the eigenvalue. But now we'd like to understand um, how much uh, the eigenvalue with the largest real part may may fluctuate, may deviate from square root of n. And for this, uh, this knowledge was not uh, available. In fact. Uh, to May in his time, it's available now to us due to uh, basically large deviation theory and recent developments, although it was interestingly not that much discussed in the literature as I found preparing these lectures. Uh, so part of it, of course, is well known, but the other part uh, was less known. So let me discuss. Oops. Okay. So. Uh, I'm happy uh, that um, Sylvia had her lectures before mine, uh, although originally it was, I, I know, not <laughs> planned. It, it just happened accidentally, but uh, frequently accidental changes are beneficial. So uh, I, uh, I'm grateful to her uh, since uh, she really invested a lot of time in explaining uh, meaning of uh, large deviation uh, ideas for Coulomb gases. So after that, it will be easier for me. I can just quote a few things. Uh, so um, from now on, uh, I'd like to consider most in most of. Sorry, I lost my mic. OK. Um, from now on, I'm going to consider it's natural to, con uh, to rescale variables by square root of n in order to have uh, all eigenvalues concentrated, um, uh, typically concentrated inside circle of radius 1. So uh, we consider, uh, instead of uh, original matrices G, we consider matrices Z, which are, which are G divided by square root of n. And then. Uh, for such a matrix, uh, mean eigenvalue density R1 uh, of Z, which I also probably frequently denote as rho equilibrium, equilibrium uh, density. This, uh, uh, this terminology should be by now known to you. It's then 1 over pi if modulus of Z is smaller than 1 and 0 otherwise. So just inside unit circle. Um, so, um, so we have a uh, circle of uh, unit radius. Of, and so let me just draw it again now of radius 1. And we have more or less of order of n complex eigenvalues there, apart from some uh, subdominant proportion of real eigenvalues. So, as uh, was several times discussed in, or mentioned many times in Silver's uh, lectures, typical separation between complex eigenvalues will be, I think, okay, uh, will be n to minus one half. It was one over d in her lectures, and here we are in two dimensions. So n to minus one half, obviously, if you just take n points and distribute them inside. Um, unit circle. And this means 
uh, that this is also the scale at which we uh, can expect some non-trivial correlation between eigenvalues. But otherwise, if I, for example, fix uh, two values, z1 and z2, of, uh, with finite separation, and let n tend to infinity, then I should expect that basically um, properties of uh, eigenvalues of the, or eigenvalue densities, they are uncorrelated uh, on, that, on, on that distance. And in particular, so if I fix, uh, so um, uh, I, uh, the fact that I will use later on is that if I consider this uh, endpoint correlation function, Zn, for fixed, uh, for fixed Z1 not equal to Z2 not equal and so on to Zn, so Zn fixed of order of unity, then it factorizes in the limit uh, I would write it like that. When n tends to infinity, we should expect that they, are, they just factorize to the product from 1 to n of one point densities uh, of r uh, i of z, uh, um, 1. Uh, oh, sorry, r, r1 of z i. So we'll just. Uh, uh, factorize. Since arguments uh, then will be already far apart in this scale. I will use it later on. But what we else know about, de uh, about the density, we know really uh, that the large deviation type result which controls how the empirical density, namely uh, by empirical density is just, I mean, the density of, of the counting measure, Rn uh, of z, just sum of delta functions, two-dimensional delta functions at every, at every eigenvalue of the matrix, 1 to n, uh, divided by n, 1 divided by n. So this is uh, the empirical density. We know that it converges to equilibrium density, but we also know um, how deviations from this, uh, what is the probability to, uh, for uh, this density or for, for, correspo uh, for corresponding measure, whose density is this uh, empirical density, to deviate from the equilibrium measure. And this is given by large deviation uh, principle, which I now informally informally state, more or less in the form close to how it was stated in uh, Sylvia's lectures. So basically, uh, if we consider, if we consider, okay, call it emu uh, space of, space of probability measures, Uh, symmetric with respect to um, complex conjugation, because we, uh, we know that uh, every, uh, why we, we uh, it's enough to consider only this, because we know that all eigenvalues of real Geneva ensemble, they come in complex uh, conjugate pairs. So it should be symmetric with respect to complex conjugation. So this, and consider a, any uh, measurable subset B in EMU, then we know that uh, then uh, large deviation principle uh, states that uh, P, okay, I will call it Pn of B, which is probability, probability that corresponding uh, counting measure, mu n, whose density is, is, is rho, belongs to to this subset of E B is approximately equal to exponential minus n squared, this famous n squared, then infimum uh, over, over this subset B of a, some functional G of mu. Large this large deviation uh, functional, and it's given explicitly 
it's given explicitly by the following expression j of mu equal to one half of integral uh, modulus z squared d mu minus one half uh, integral uh, of log z minus w d mu z d mu of z d mu of w minus minus 3a. This is the result of Benarus and Zituni 98 that uh, for real Geneva ensemble this is a correct uh, form of the large deviation a functional. Uh, this is nice convex has unique minimizer which is given by that equilibrium density. Okay. Uh, I think after Sylvia's lecture, there is no much point to discuss the origin of this. But uh, basically, just a few words. I, uh, if you look at, if you look at uh, the joint probability density expression that I explicitly uh, given to you in the last lecture, you will see, uh, OK, you will see the origin of that. This, of course, comes just from the wonder modulus of a product of differences Z, zi minus zj modulus of the, this van der Monde factor. You may be surprised. Satya Majumdar, uh, I'm not sure that he's here today, because, <laughs> but I can answer his question of the last lecture. Namely, he noticed that um, exponential factor in, uh, in, in the joint probability density uh, contained not, uh, which I showed to you, contained not modulus of z squared as, as he naively expected, and which is the case for Geneber uh, with complex uh, entries in complex, um, uh, with all complex entries, but it's just z itself. Uh, it was fine because uh, we know that to every z there is corresponding uh, complex conjugate eigenvalue, so z squared plus z bar squared is still real, so it can be a correct factor, but here we will we see that really in large deviation exactly modulus of z squared enters, and one uh, it's it's simple exercise to show how to massage that corresponding density to get uh, this term. But otherwise, this is typical these log gases or Coulomb gases, uh, large deviation function. Okay, so we know this. Uh, so now, how it, uh, we, uh, I remind you, our interest is in understanding uh, what, what is the probability for the eigenvalue with the largest real part to deviate in this scale from one to the left and to the right. Now it's clear, completely clear, that if I'd like to consider such measures for which my uh, eigenvalue with the largest real part is to the left of one, I need to show the whole bunch, I mean, the whole rest of eigenvalues to the left. And basically, uh, it will be penalized precisely by, by this type of uh, penalty, uh, exponential of minus n squared, uh, since it's uh, basically mi mi microscop uh, microscopic uh, if I need to, if I'd like to move um, this eigenvalue to mac microscopic distance to the left, uh, I shove all eigenvalues to the left, and then it's pe penalized by by really uh, uh, that expression where corresponding rate will be given by minimum with imposed condition uh, that all eigenvalues are to the left. And uh, clearly, uh, equilibrium measure is not in that set, so it will be uh, penalized with rate and squared, and therefore uh, I can write that uh, I conclude the following uh, simple fact, which will be also useful for us later on when we study nonlinear system. Surprisingly, it will be very helpful. Or uh, this result, or rather its uh, analog, will be very helpful. So. Uh, I will write that. 
sorry. I have problems with this mic. It goes off all the time. Okay. Um, so if I denote now xm, xm is a maximum of real part of all zi's from 1 to n, so just maximal real part of all eigenvalues, then uh, this consideration shows that probability that uh, xm is smaller than x is given by exponential minus n squared some constant c of x as long as x small, uh, uh, smaller than 1. And c of x is, uh, is positive. c of x smaller than 1 is positive and given by corresponding minimization problem. I do not need explicit expression. I just need that it's uh, very severely uh, penalized. What about, uh, OK, this is probability that my eigenvalue, uh, the largest eigenvalue is to the left. What about probability to the right? Is it controlled by this type of large deviation? The answer is no, and it's clear, uh, clear uh, morally quite clear why. Because in order to have such an event that just uh, largest eigenvalue is to the right, it's enough to take a single atom of this measure, just a single eigenvalue, and place it somewhere here. This practically does not change on scale comparable with n, equilibri uh, the rest. It still will be almost equilibrium density uh, minus one atom. So one cannot see any change in functional here. So it's not really uh, the way uh, to consider. It shows that uh, this is controlled by something else. And now uh, I'm going to argue um, that it's given by, in fact, by different um, large, uh, large deviation uh, type with different speed, or, or not n squared, but n. So my goal is to show uh, that probability goal, uh, to explain that probability of xm being larger than x, larger than 1, behaves as exponential minus n L of x. And I even will quote uh, the, uh, explicitly this L of x. So it's less penalized. It's only with n rather than with n squared. So how to, how to understand this? Uh, so I just will derive basically this, uh, this probability or leading term of this probability, using a nice line of argument uh, that was uh, given for a different uh, ensemble, basically for the limiting case of this ensemble, for uh, GOE, for, uh, for a limiting case of, um, not for, Gene for real Geneber, and not for, for family, really, which I'm going to discuss uh, in the next lecture, uh, in, in my two next lectures uh, tomorrow, uh, ensemble which interpolates between real Geneber ensemble and ensemble with purely real eigenvalues, GOE. But for GOE, it was known. And it was uh, given, uh, in, uh, it, it was first calculated by uh, Benarus uh, and Guionnet uh, um, by using quite different technique. But I think there is a very uh, nice and simple argument which uh, gives, uh, which recovers their result and also gives this result, which I was not able to find in the literature. Seems to be no one was interested <laughs> in this result. Uh, and I will give you a um, brief, uh, brief idea how one can get it. So basically, let me introduce such function. Indica basically, it's indicator function, function chi of u, which is 1 if uh, u is positive and 0 when u is negative. I know mathematicians prefer to write it as indicator function, but I prefer to write it as this is step function. 
Um, physicists like to call it heavyside step function. Um, its derivative will be delta function, which I also used. And using it, uh, it's easy to write down uh, the, uh, the distribution of uh, the largest uh, real part, uh, just formally. So what is the distribution of, OK, the density of the largest real part, Pn of x, is derivative of the distribution by definition, Den, where En Again, by definition, is just expected value, which uh, I agreed to, to denote with uh, angular brackets, product of just this chi of x minus xi, where xi is a real part of the i, product of all i to n. So what is written here is just an event that x is, x is larger than, uh, than every real part. And then taking its derivative, we just have the density of, of, the, of the largest real part. So why this is, uh, th this all is, of course, uh, evident, but slightly uh, massaging it, uh, one, one gets uh, interesting information, as was noticed by, um, by Peter Forster. So one writes, chi of u is 1 minus chi of minus u replaces every chi with 1 minus chi of, of, of uh, its opposite, and then John expands the product. So then we get that En obviously is just product of 1 minus chi of xi minus x now. I just reverting the order, product over all i. And then I just expand this term by term. So the first term is product of ones, one. Next term minus sum one to n chi of xi minus x. Then next term plus double sum i not equal to j to n chi of xi minus x chi of xj minus x, and so on, triple, and so on, of this expansion. Now, now I, I will use the definition, uh, of course, uh, it's already gone, the definition of these um, correlation functions, which are obtained marginal densities, which are obt obtained by integrating out all variables but one, all variables but two, all variables but three. It's clear that every term here can be written down as integral using this uh, correlation function. That's in particular why they are use uh, useful. So it will be one minus integral of R1 of Z times chi of uh, real part of z minus x integrated over complex plane. This is this term. Then next term. Next term plus 1 divided by 2 factorial uh, double integral r2. r2 of z1, z2. And then product of two chi's, chi of real part of z1 minus x, a chi of real part of z2 minus x, integrated over z1 and z2, and so on. The next term will be a third correlation function times product of three chi's, and so on and so forth, with corresponding coefficients. And now I will use the following, uh, the following fact. In fact, we'll use this factorization. But first, this, we are now discussing an event when uh, eigenvalue really, when x is larger than 1. So the density here is clearly very small. It's, it's 0 when n tends to infinity, but when n is big but, uh, but um, 
finite, it's uh, clearly small with n. We, we in fact can explicitly find how small is that. If this is the case, and also uh, one can one can show that really these these integrals are dominated by uh, in, in the large and limit by fixed values of z1 and z2, I mean uh, not by distances which are small. So basically I can use factorization and since uh, we know that r1 is already small, clearly r, uh, all other terms will be uh, of higher order of uh, um, uh, even smaller. They will be like square, like cube of this small. So it means that the dominant term will be just this. And uh, using this fact, we see that basically uh, the probability of interest to us is simply given in terms of, um, of, uh, of the object that we spent much time uh, discussing, this uh, dens uh, mean density. But just one should uh, investigate it with higher precision, which um, which does not just give zero here, but just gives the order of magnitude. And this will give us precisely uh, the required result. So uh, this E n is approximately one minus uh, one minus integral of R1 of Z delta of re part of Z minus X uh, Z plus small terms, and then w taking derivative. Ah, no, no, chi, it's chi here. S sorry, it's chi here. Uh, but now uh, I take derivative. P n is obtained by taking derivative over x, so I get delta function rather than uh, uh, differentiating uh, chi over x. I get delta function. So P n of x. Uh, is approximately equal to integral r1 of z uh, delta function of re z minus x. So it means that I can immediately integrate over x is just uh, what remains integral over y, right? Uh, so this is just integral from minus infinity to infinity r1 of x y dy where r1, uh, remember, r1 of x, y uh, has two parts, has r1 complex of x, y plus delta function of y, uh, r1 real. So uh, then exercise amounts to studying uh, these are one at values of x outside the circle. Th this amounts to, okay, um, we remember that the main ingredient in both R1 uh, real and R1 complex uh, is this um, incomplete gamma function. So one should uh, uh, find finer asymptotic of this gamma function, but this is completely straightforward using integral representation. And then one recovers. One recovers precisely what I promised. Uh, did I promise? Yes. One, one recovers exactly this uh, with L of x. So, uh, and one recovers that uh, Pn of x, as a result of this exercise, Pn of x larger than 1 is equal to exponential um, minus n, and then explicitly. Uh, explicit function, very simple in fact for this particular case, minus log x. Okay? And it's easy to see that this is positive for x larger than 1 and equal to 0 at x equal to 1, which is uh, of course very natural. So this is the right large deviation uh, expression for the probability of real part to be to the right. Okay, how much time do I have? Uh, minus five. Okay. <laughs> uh, then I uh, have to apologize. I didn't notice you probably flagged me, but I, di I didn't pay attention. 
so we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.